Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. If you go to, to Aptera's website now, if you go to the vehicle configurator and you click on front wheel drive system, it says launch edition Aptera. So we know now that the launch edition Aptera is using the Vitesco EMR3 e-axle and it's front wheel drive only. They couldn't get, they couldn't figure out a rear wheel drive um, system for it. And it makes sense because if you want, unless you get a hub motor in here, see Aptera was designed to use hub motors and this rear flange is very narrow and there's not much it's just barely wide enough to cover the wheel and in order to draw, do a traditional rear wheel drive system like see this is the electromechanica solo they have a belt drive system and you, they have a pulley on the side of the um the single rear wheel which is the drive wheel so the electromechanica solo was a rear wheel drive um, belt drive system uh, sort of like a motorcycle and you see how wide that is and that just would not fit in the aptera it just doesn't fit within the um the space of the rear wheel cup co wheel covers so they couldn't make that work and it's pretty clear that they're trying to you know either with um, elafe or someone else they're trying to get a rear hub motor system worked out here which will be the all-wheel drive system and and i think that there is some serious advantages to that because if you do some calculations on how much power you need to drive the aptera at highway speed it requires surprisingly little power and if you got a highly efficient low power hub motor in the back you could theoretically turn off the front wheels and disengage the drivetrain from the front wheels and have a single high efficiency, low power hub motor drive it on the highway. It would make for very, very efficient highway cruising. So I found this vehicle physics online calculator here, and I wanted to put in some, some information um, to make it the same as the Aptera and figure out how much power is required for cruising at highway speed. All right, so first of all, we need to calculate the, um, the effective frontal area. So let's say um, 0.13 coefficient of drag, and then the projected frontal area is 2.2 square meters. Um, we calculated this back in um, this video called Revisiting Aptera's Efficiency, and you can download Aptera's official 3D model and then have a computer program uh, basically figure out the effective projected frontal area, which is 2.2 uh, square meters, which is a pretty big frontal area actually, because if you look at their um, typical values, uh, a car generally has a coefficient of drag of between 0.25 and 0.5. That's a really, really um, unaerodynamic vehicle and has a projected frontal area between 1.5 and 2 meters squared. So Aptera has much lower coefficient drag, but a little bit on the higher end of, of frontal area. So and then you calculate frontal effective frontal area, it's 0.286. So let's change this to 0 0.286. Weight of the launch edition Aptera is about 1,000 kilos or 2,200 pounds. Uh, rolling resistance on asphalt is about 0 0.011. So 0 0.011. Uh, it's probably going to be a little bit less because rolling resistance is, a, is somewhat deemed by the tire compound and the amount of tire deformation because it's lighter, you probably have less. But anyways, we'll we'll go with 0.011. Uh, road gradient, let's assume completely flat, no headwind, and a power trade efficiency of about 95%. So that's, that's like the losses in the um, axles and things like that. So this is not um, motor efficiency, this is powertrain efficiency. So 95% is pretty um, good. Um, it's probably gonna be a little bit higher because um, this assumes powertrain efficiency through a transmission that Aptera really doesn't have much of a transition. It's a single gear reduction uh, in the Vitesco EMR3. And then people are concerned because the VMR uh, EMR3 has a continuous power of 50 kilowatts. And 50 kilowatts is only 67 horsepower, which seems really low. So it has peak horsepower of 201 horsepower, but continuous horsepower of 67 horsepower, which seems low, but is actually plenty of horsepower once you do the calculations most power is used in acceleration um, constant cruising does not require much horsepower all right so let's put in 
uh, about 60 miles per hour, which is 100 kilometers per hour. You calculate um, propulsion power, it's seven kilowatts. Uh, so 6,000, so 7,000 watts, which is six ki uh, seven kilowatts. So if you put in seven kilowatts here, that's only nine horsepower. So you only need nine horsepower to go about 60 miles per hour on a flat road with no headwind. Um, so that you can see that's extremely, extremely low power. It'd be very easy to find a 10 horsepower hub motor. That would be very, very easy to do. Like there's probably, you know, motorcycle hub motors that do that or scooter hub motors that do that. Um, let's say you, you want to go faster. So it, let's say you have a lead foot and so you go 80 miles per hour on the highway. So that's 128 kilometers per hour. So let's put 128. That's 12,000, so 12 kilowatts. That is 16 horsepower. So that's all the horsepower you need to go 80 miles per hour on a flat road with no headwind on the Aptera. Now let's do some calculations. So this is like if you found a 20 horsepower hub motor, it would handle most flat highway cruising without any assistance. And then if you got a lot of headwind, you started going up a mountain, then you could kick the front uh, motors back in and give the additional power while you're going uphill and then go back to um, the single hub motor in the back for cruising. That would be highly, highly efficient. Well, the other thing that made, so I think, I think there's a lot of potential after the launch edition is over and they have all-wheel drive. I, I personally think the way Aptera should go is instead of getting a powerful rear hub motor, they should get an efficient, low power rear motor. And then you could have super high efficiency in highway cruising, which I think would be much better than having super high performance all the time. If you got a really powerful hub motor in the back, you could get better acceleration and things like that. But I think a lighter, smaller, more efficient um, would be much better for uh, just, and, and you would get like really, really efficient highway cruising, which I think would be awesome. All right, the other thing I wanted to calculate is since we know that Vitesco, so for the launch editions, we know it has a continuous horsepower of uh, 50 kilowatts. What's the max speed an Aptera could obtain with 50 kilowatts? Um, so let's figure out, let's just keep increasing the speed until this shows 50,000 watts. So 300 kilowatts. Okay, that's way too much. We definitely will not reach that. 250 kilometers. Okay, would not reach that. 220? Okay, so 225. Okay, yeah, so yeah, basically 223, I think, is where we're going to hit it. Yeah, 223. So 223 kilometers. That's 138 miles per hour. Now that's probably a little bit ambitious, um, but theoretically uh, with these constraints of flat road, no headwind um, and continuous 50 kilowatt production, you with Aptera's um, weight of a thousand kilograms and effective motor area, you could theoretically hit 130 miles per hour. Um, that seems excessively fast. So that shows you that although 67 horsepower seems low, it's it's quite a bit of horsepower if you have a very, very slippery car. Now, obviously, once you change like road gradients, like uh, the maximum road gradient um, uh, in the U.S. interstate system is about 6% in mountainous areas. So if you do that, the power requirement goes up up significantly so you're not going to be able to hold 138 up a hill uh, maybe yeah you could you could definitely hold 80 miles per hour up a hill because 128 that only requires 34 uh, kilowatts even up a hill up a hill with like a 30 you know with a headwind yeah so if you're going up the maximum hill with like a 30 mile per hour headwind, you could maintain 80 miles per hour with this the Tesco motor. So I think that's 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 very good. Um, there would be no problems doing that. All right, so very interesting. 
Um, I will put a link to this calculator in the description below. Um, it's fun to kind of play around with. And uh, let me know what you think Aptera should do. Should they get a powerful rear hub motor when they convert to the all-wheel drive system and get more performance? Or should they go with an efficient, low-power uh, hub motor and just get better highway cruising efficiency? I vote for the latter. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.